Humans need community for our emotional health. Take stock of who we are and what we have and then use it for good. So much could be solved, she thinks, if we simply held hands with each other more often. There was no reason for what happened to you, Eddie. These are a few quotes from the new book, Dear Edward by Anne Napolitano. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Read the Right Thing. I'm your host, Eric. Hope everybody's doing well. Dear Edward is a novel published in 2020 by Anne Napolitano. The story is about a 12-year-old boy who is the sole survivor of a plane crash from Newark Airport to LAX. The novel is partially inspired by the crash of Africa Airways Flight 771 on May 12, 2010. On that flight, everyone was killed except for a nine-year-old boy. The author was inspired by these events in the news to write the book, Dear Edward. The book opens with Edward and his family going through the security line in Newark Airport. If you fly a lot, you've probably done that. Simple, everyday tasks that people just kind of mindlessly go through. We meet Edward, his brother, and his mom and dad. In just a few pages, we really get a sense of who these people are, which is a credit to the author. We get a glimpse into how they act, their personalities, what they care about, things like that. She economizes her words, and everything that happens tells us about who they are as people. Even something as simple as going through the security line at Newark Airport. I like how she doesn't tell us about these people, but she shows us. You know, it's the classic show, don't tell. And uh, I want to read a part from the first chapter. Newark Airport is shiny from a recent renovation. There are potted plants at each joint of the security line to keep passengers from realizing how long they'll have to wait. People prop themselves against walls or sit on suitcases. They all woke up before dawn. They exhale loudly, sputtering with exhaustion. When the Adler family reaches the front of the line, they load their computers and shoes into trays. Bruce Adler removes his belt, rolls it up, and slots it neatly beside his brown loafers in a gray plastic bin. His sons are messier, throwing sneakers on top of laptops and wallets. Laces hang over the side of their shared tray, and Bruce can't stop himself from tucking the loose strands inside. The large rectangular sign beside them reads, all wallets, keys, phones, jewelry, electronic devices, computers, tablets, metal objects, shoes, belts, and food must go into the security bins. All drink and contraband must be thrown away. Bruce and Jane Adler flank their 12-year-old son, Eddie, as they approach the screening machine. Their 15-year-old son, Jordan, hangs back until his family has gone through. Jordan says to the officer manning the machine, I want to opt out. The officer gives him a look. What'd you say? The boy shoves his hands in his pockets and says, I want to opt out of going through the machine. The officer yells, apparently to the room at large. We've got a male opt. Jordan, his father says from the far side of the tunnel. What are you doing? The boy shrugs. This is a full body backscatter, dad. It's the most dangerous and least effective screening machine on the market. I've read about it and I'm not going through it. And I'm not going through it. Bruce, who is 10 yards away and knows he won't be allowed to go back through the scanner to join his son, shuts his mouth. He doesn't want Jordan to say another word. Step to the side, kid, the officer says. You're holding up traffic. After the boy has complied, the officer says, let me tell you, it's a whole lot easier and more pleasant to go through this machine than to have that guy over there pat you down. Those pat downs are thorough, if you know what I mean. The boy pushes hair off his forehead. He's grown six inches in the last year and is whippet thin. Like his mother and brother, he has curly hair that grows so quickly he can't keep it in check. His father's hair is short and white. The white arrived when Bruce was 27, the same year Jordan was born. Bruce likes to point at his head and say to his son, look what you did to me. The boy is aware that his father is staring intently at him now, as if trying to deliver good sense through the air. Jordan says, there are four reasons I'm not going through this machine. Would you like to hear them? So I like how the book opens directly in the security line. We don't get a lot of backstory. We don't even know why they're leaving. We just know how they react while going through the security line, which I think is an interesting way in learning about characters. You know, how does someone act going through a security line? The father is very neat and he folds everything. He's very orderly and his oldest son 
and his youngest son, Eddie, are the exact opposite. They just haphazardly throw things in, and his oldest son doesn't even want to go through the security checkpoints. So he's kind of at that age where he's, he's learning things, he's gaining opinions for himself, and he's going to voice those opinions. The novel has this postmodern, fragmented narrative, uh, which I always find enjoyable. The fragmented narrative means the sequences are jumbled up. There is no linear storyline going from A to B to C. Fragmented narratives, they completely reject, you know, the traditional flow of beginning to middle to end. It doesn't follow the plot chart you probably learned in middle school or high school. Sometimes these fragmented narratives, they can be difficult to piece together. You know, it's like a challenging puzzle that the reader has to connect. They have all these jumbled up pieces and it's the reader's job to really connect this story as a whole. Think of Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction. On first viewing, you don't know exactly what's going on. The narrative of Dear Edward, however, it's not, it's not hard to piece together. You always know where you are and what is happening. The story switches from the events leading up to the plane crash to after the plane crash, and Edward coping with being the sole survivor of the crash. Edward is really forced into this new life. He loses both parents, he loses his brother, he no longer lives in his old apartment, in his old neighborhood in New York City. But now he lives with his aunt and uncle in New Jersey. After the plane crash, Edward becomes an instant celebrity, but he's not necessarily ready to be one. Edward moves to New Jersey with his aunt and uncle and they try to help him heal from the tragic event. While living with his aunt and uncle, Edward befriends a girl named Shay who helps him get through trauma, school, and life. Shay is his next door neighbor and becomes one of his best friends. Shay is probably my favorite character of the book. You know, she's supportive of Edward, but also doesn't baby him kind of like his aunt and uncle do. You know, she'll call him out on his bullshit, but also be his biggest supporter. You know, you love characters like that. While, sh while Shay and Edward are rummaging through a shed one night, they find a duffel bag full of letters to Edward. The letters are from family members of the people who died in the plane crash. Some of the letters encourage Edward they encourage Edward to live life to the fullest, to honor the deceased from the crash. Some letters even ask him to do something that the people on the plane had hopes to do, like paint or visit the Great Wall of China or even go to law school, things like that. And I started to think about if I myself or if I knew someone who died on a plane crash and there was one sole survivor, would I want to seek that person out? Would I write them a letter or would I try to talk to them what would I ask them? Would I ask them if they had any contact with my loved one? No, I don't know. It's kind of an interesting question. Dear Edward, it's a book that'll make you laugh, it'll make you cry, and it'll make you reflect on the fragility of life, that it can be taken from us in just an instant. It'll also make you reflect on what the human spirit can overcome. Sometimes I hesitate to read these newer books because I feel they have less value than the classics. If you only have a certain amount of time to read, shouldn't you read something deemed more worthy? Possibly. But some newer books, I think they are the right thing to read. You know a book, like I read a couple years ago, called Bear Town. That was enjoyable and well-written. Or even a few books I read in college, they came out in the last 10 to 20 years. So I think there's real value in reading, you know, current, current literature. There are definitely benefits to reading this book. Just because something is new doesn't mean it won't change your life. I, th I think that's something I'm going to work on. I want to read newer books because also it's interesting because they're new. You know, no one has opinions on them until they come out. I think books are definitely meant to evoke emotions. And this book definitely did this for me. That's my review. This book was definitely the right thing for me. So I want to hear from you. Did you read Dear Edward? What did you think of the book? If you like this video, if you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit the hit the like button. That'd really help me out. It'd be good to know that someone out there is gaining some value from these videos other than myself. And uh, if you want to see more of the books I'm reviewing, you can hit that subscribe because I'll be posting pretty frequently, probably at least once a week.